Hey guys, so I am out here gardening today. It is a gorgeous day, a little chilly. It's like 56 degrees, but still nice. Um, going through my mint patch here. I'm gonna take out all this dead stuff. Um, like I said, this is hen bit, which you can eat. So I'm gonna keep that in the garden and just take out a lot of the clovers that grew in there. Um, and the caterpillar grass that keeps invading my garden. But yeah, it's going to be a nice day out here gardening. So here are some little sweet potatoes that, I mean, really, who's going to, well, this one's kind of big, but these are tiny. Who does that feed? Um, so I'm going to cut them up. Um, I did read, like, you could soak them in water, blah, 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 get them sprouted. But I'm just going to cut them up and throw them in. Because I've seen other, or I read a book, like, Kids Gardening, that you can do that or something like that years ago. So I'm just going to cut these up into some pieces and throw them in the garden. That's going to give us nine. And I guess this is where leaves would sprout. And then those turn into more potatoes. So each of these will give me a nice little bundle of sweet potatoes. So I'm really excited if this actually works. So I'm just going to go and plant them in the garden. So I dug a couple holes. I'm not a perfect gardener. I experiment. I had a neighbor when we lived in Ronkonkoma, New York had a neighbor that showed me her vegetable garden. Their landscaping, her and her husband, were amazing. And so I saw her garden and she said, I mean, it was just a, you know, a thrown together kind of thing. And she's like, I just throw shit in and see what happens. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I'm like, you know what, I like that philosophy. <laughs> kind of like life, right? They say that about nursing school. They just throw shit at you and see what sticks. So, I still got two more here. Let's put those over here. I still got to come out and clean these beds. The weather's been much nicer recently. We had that cold spell. Then it got warm. Then it got cold again. But we should be out of the frost. Those look like zucchini. You know, like squash leaves. It's possible. Yeah, so look, you could eat all this stuff. Isn't that amazing? So that's the sweet potatoes. Let's see what happens. So I pulled some of those Asian mustard greens. Well, actually Asian greens. I don't know if they're mustard greens. And um, I'm going to saute them. Maybe with some onion. And I'm going to make eggs with that on the side. And see if that really does mellow the flavor out. Like they said. Because it's spicy. It is spicy. So I'll wash them, pat them dry, and cook them up. Hey guys. Um, so I did my weeding out there in the garden, and I did cut up these things. So I know I've seen these before, and they were like some kind of Asian greens, but I can't identify them on internet. Um, because I thought they were mustard greens, but when the picture comes up, it doesn't exactly look like this. I mean, this looks like the kale type. And then I looked up Chinese kale, and it still doesn't look like this. So, and it's very, very spicy. I tried it raw. So they said it could mellow down, like the mustard greens can mellow down when you cook them. So I'm going to cook them. Get this going. And I'm gonna make some eggs with that. I got my two eggs here. And scramble it. 
and some salt. Woo! Yeah, okay. Got this one hot. So we'll see what it tastes like. I also cut some onions up. Mm, you can see it. Cut some onions. So this is kind of like my brunch. Have any in yet? And I have my Dave's Killer Bread that I'm just gonna put some butter on. Um, so we're gonna heat that up. I have my avocado oil. Put a little bit in the pan. All right, so this was the middle part and it has a huge stem, but I'm gonna take them off the stalks. Yeah, they even have a bitter smell to them. Hmm. All right, so let's do that. And then I'll throw the stems back in the garden to compost. Because I don't want to waste. And it's good for the garden too. I did keep some weeds in there because <laughs> there are some weeds that are edible. John's making fun of me because of that. He's like, yeah, eat the grass there. My neighbor's lawn. She doesn't fertilize, so she has weeds everywhere. So, I picked the weeds off of her property, because John fertilizes. I wonder if you can eat clover. She has a lot of clover. And she does have dandelion, but the dandelion, the leaves aren't that big. But I'm learning. I want to take an herbal class and learn all about the different medicines and the way you forage, as they say. Um, okay. Also, I wanted to mention, my cousin signed up with Epicure. I don't know if any of you heard Epicure before. Let's get this in. Um, Epicure was based out of Canada and finally opened up to the United States about two or three years ago. And they're kind of like Wild Tree. And you've seen me, I had some products from Wild Tree. Let me show you. So Wild Tree is organic, all natural, no preservatives, um, spices and condiments and stuff like that. And they give you recipes. But they had, they were closing shop about two or three years ago. They ended up reopening because there was such a demand that people were very upset that they were going to close. Just putting a little bit of salt on my onions. And um, a consultant that I knew from Wild Tree moved over to Epicure. Um, so then that's when I started looking into Epicure. So Epicure, kind of like my savory spice shop little spice and easy packets that I've made some dishes with. Um, oh, you know what, let me show you one. So this is the spice and easy. This one's tikka, tikka masala, right? And it gives you all the spices and it gives you the recipe. It also tells you what ingredients you need. So you've seen me use these. So Epicure is kind of like this. You'll get all these packets of meals and so it gives you the seasoning and it's all organic no preservatives um some of their uh i guess baking products are gluten free um so these are awesome i do get these from the savory spice shop these are about five dollars a piece um epicure their products it's like 10 bucks but you get three so it actually comes out less than these um, cause I'm going to start working a little more now. And so, um, I love making food from scratch, but when I start working now or in the days that I'm working, uh, cause my eyes are doing a lot better. Look at my eyes. Um, I'm not a hundred percent. 
I actually still have one more surgery to go, uh, but that's further down the line. Um, but now that I'm able to go back to work, I actually have to start cooking meals that are quicker for my family because I refuse to eat out. I refuse to order recipe, um, restaurants and delivery and fast food. I just can't, can't, can't do it. Um, but of course, cooking from scratch takes too long. And sometimes I've even spent my entire weekends just prepping food for the week. So I don't want to do that anymore, you know? So my cousin signed up with Epicure. She's the one that came here and we made flan and the papa de genos, or well, de genos de papa, um, arroz con andules and carne mechada. Uh, she signed up with Epicure and I told her I'll have a party. So I'm arranging with her to have some kind of party date that I'm gonna launch on either YouTube or my Instagram page. Um, so I wanna do a party because I want to try their products. I never got to try products. You know, I have these um, and I, I have done Wild Tree um, and they're good. Um, but now I'm going to try Epicure. Like I said, Epicure Epicure is more like you get a meal. Like I've seen um, the Alfredo. I've seen a chili. Um, there was one rotisserie chicken. So it's everything in a packet, and it tells you what you need. On top of that, it also, they'll give you more recipes. So like the rotisserie chicken one. You don't even have to just always make rotisserie chicken. There'll be recipes that you could use it for other dishes. So I thought that was fascinating. So I'm going to let you know when that happens. I'll tell you the date of the party, and we'll do it on Instagram or Facebook. Um, I think my cousin will do some cooking. Yeah. Or I'll do some cooking. Ooh, ooh, that was bad. Oh my goodness. I completely missed the pot. There you go. <laughs> so I put butter so I can start my eggs. My, here, let's get this over here. So those will wilt. My egg. Turn that off, and then let's get this going. So they said it should mellow the flavor. Let me lower that. And Asian greens, what was it? Great for, can reduce risk of cancer, improve blood pressure. And I believe it also said, um, Eye health too. I'm sure, it's loaded with vitamin C. Uh, I'm telling you, I'm getting it everywhere. Okay. Let that cook down. Let's get some salt. Just a little bit. Hopefully the onions will sweeten this dish this this, this dish up. So there's my flank steak for tonight, and then Dave's killer bread. I'm just gonna put butter on one. I just got those yesterday. All right. Yeah. Lower that. All right. Let's cut these up. Mm. So I'm eating from the garden today. So later on tonight, I'm going to be making salad. We're going to also, John's going to grill a flank steak, my marinated flank steak, which you've seen before. Balsamic, olive oil, my pasta seasoning blend. Um, and then I'm going to make it with um, hash brown waffles. We're going to use our waffle iron to make some hash browns. Let's throw this in. I'm just missing everything. 
I guess I do need my other eye surgery soon. There you go. Yeah. So there's my brunch. Gotta tell you, I try. Okay, I tried this. Let me try it with the onion. It definitely mellowed it out, but it is a very bitter green. It might be something good to cook with more milder tasting things like spinach and regular kale. It definitely mellowed it out, I gotta admit. Um, not bad. This would go good with steak. This would go this would go better with steak because it's a strong flavor, so it needs something strong to go with it. Um but yeah, that's my brunch. Then you'll see dinner later. Alright, so I did eat it, but it 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 I don't like it. Gotta be honest, I don't like it. I wanna like it. There's so much of it in the backyard, it looks so good, but I don't like it. It's too spicy. It mellowed out a little bit, but as I kept eating it, even with, you know, putting egg and the greens on the fork at the same time, it's just too bitter and too spicy. I'm not sure what to do with it. Okay, so for my steak, flank steak. I can see that, there you go. I'm gonna put in about, let's say, a third of a cup avocado oil. I'm going to put in, oops, which way does this go? Let's see. This is about, let's see, about a quarter cup of balsamic. This one I got from Trader, no, not Trader Joe's, um, my bad. Costco, organic. This one I got from Trader Joe's, so pasta seasoning mix. I've mentioned it before, um, Trader Joe's sell or sold, where is it? I have it somewhere. Ah, let me find it. Okay. Hey. So Trader Joe's used to sell this pasta seasoning blend that I absolutely love. Oops, let's see, does it focus? Uh, a little bit. But there's the ingredients. And they don't sell it anymore. So I made it myself, which I gotta make more. So I'm gonna put about two tablespoons Mmm, smells so good. Two tablespoons of this pasta seasoning mix. And that's pretty much it. You know what, let me put a little bit of salt. Just a little bit of pink Himalayan sea salt. So I'm gonna marinate this. Pour it in. Let's marinate. Clean my counter later. And let that sit in this yummy goodness for right now it's two o'clock and we'll probably grill at like five. So it's gonna be sitting here for three hours. I'll make sure like I keep flipping it. Get it in there. Make sure it's all coated, and I'll keep flipping it like every half hour or so. So for dinner, I'm gonna get the potatoes ready. I got this little cool gadget from Pampered Chef. I have so many Pampered Chef gadgets. I did try selling it at one point, but I'm not a salesperson. Um, some of their stuff is just way too expensive and I couldn't push that on someone else. Um, but this thing is really cool. It literally just sits on top of a bowl pretty nicely and you actually go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and it grates it. 
pretty cool, huh? And that one I think was not as expensive as their mandolin or something like that. Um, so I'm going to grate these potatoes. I do have an onion. I have an onion, so I'm going to grate that as well. Season it with salt and pepper, and we're going to put them in the waffle iron. Meanwhile, my steak is getting nice and marinated. I've been flipping it over and over and over again. So John will throw that on the grill. Um, and then I'm going to pick from the garden some lettuce for a nice salad tonight. Okay, I had to show you this. So I bought this probably like five years ago and only used it once. It was some recipe with Pampered Chef Freezer Cooking Party, and we did uh, we had to do the shaved sweet potato and apple. For these, I'm using the potatoes. Yeah, you just go back and forth, back and forth. Ta-da! Fits nicely on the bone. Pretty cool, right? Okay, so there's all my potatoes. I also grated some onions, but my eyes are burning now, so there's not a lot in there. Onions are so mean, they make me cry. So let's put some salt. Just a little bit. A little bit, but always add more when they're done. Some pepper. A little bit so the boys don't complain. And then I will toss it all about. Yeah, I was looking at some recipes online. Um, Pioneer Woman made this. Um, I think Ina Garner made these. There was one recipe that I saw they did add egg and flour, but I don't want to do that. I just want the potatoes. But I did see, was it Taste of Home? Um, I'll see if I'll link it. Literally, it's just the potatoes, oil for frying, and salt. So you don't really need to add anything. I added the extra onions. Ooh, I should get some chives. That would be a good idea. You know what? I'm going to leave it plain. We'll put chives on separately at the end. John wants to put some sour cream on it with some chives, so I'll do that. Yeah, and then I'm gonna put them in the waffle iron. Okay, this is not working at all. It's sticking, I put a ton of oil. I made it I'll thin, find, I'll find out from some of my friends. not working at all. I'm gonna have to do something on the stove top. So, I heated up a cast iron with some oil on the bottom and I'm gonna press this in there so we can get a nice browning hopefully stick together because those waffles didn't do anything okay that's not working either it's completely sticking so now I'm trying the tea fowl oh my god this is ridiculous Epic fail, epic fail, epic fail. It is tasty though, it's just really ugly and it's not getting that whole hash brown patty look that I'm looking for. This is as good as it's gonna get. They don't look like hash browns, more like potato pancakes, not the crispy effect that I wanted. So now I'm just crisping up that disaster over there and just going to cook up the rest of it just like a hash brown. So if you're going to be making potato pancakes, use a nonstick pan. I don't know. It just stuck to the cast iron. But this is my other ep fail. Yep, epic fail. <laughs> So I'm not sure what you call these things. One of the things I did notice is that the recipes I looked up, they use that, the frozen hash browns. So I'm not sure why, if if and why those would make a difference. And then there's this. But I tried to do fresh. 
And then because of my irritation of trying to cook these things in three pots, I had some romaine, so I just did the Caesar salad on a board instead of getting fresh lettuce from my garden. And John is cutting up the steak. That's dinner tonight. And there it is, plated. Some sour cream, oops, sorry. Some sour cream and fresh chives. Caesar salad. And of course we have the Peter Luger for the steak. That's dinner tonight. 